North of San Francisco, in the seaside hamlet of Salcedo, we visited an American legend. Edith Heath, now 88 years old, has been making her beautiful pottery dinnerware in California since the 1950s. The climate in California inspired her to create dinnerware that was both durable and elegant. The way of life in California is not like a life in Chicago. So if, if you're living in a part of the world where you don't have snow and ice, then it's outdoor, indoor living. And I wanted to do something that was as nice to use and as beautiful for everyday use as for Sunday best. But Edith Heath's earliest influence came from growing up a Midwestern farmer's daughter. Well, growing up on the farm and having to feed people outdoors, I th always thought that the, the people who work the hardest should have the nicest things to eat out of. Edith Heath has been passing on and teaching her trademark designs to her general manager, John Bruder. He's been with the company for 35 years and leads Edith's production team. The simplicity and usefulness of Edith Heath's original designs were influenced by the Bauhaus and the arts and crafts movements. Her spare lines and use of organic materials are her trademarks. I think one of the things that is unique about Heath as a pottery is that we have consciously not attempted to grow to a very large manufacturing concern. And so what we've ended up being is not quite a factory and not quite a studio. And that's been uh, a choice of Edith Heath's uh, since the beginning, because we want to retain as much of the hand quality uh, that goes into the production of a piece as we can. So what Ernesto is doing here is closely related to the early means of making pottery, which is throwing them on a wheel. And what it does is, the same as the human hand did years ago, it comes down, it carves the piece, this profile carves the piece out, there's a little jet of oil that sprays up and keeps it from, keeps the clay from sticking to the profile here. And what we ultimately end up with is, in this case, a salad plate and this will go to the glazer after it has been dried and trimmed. The Bauhaus put the emphasis on the materials. The materials should tell the story. You have to accept the character of the clay and yield to that. It'll, t it'll tell you what you can do with it. What we're doing here is another method of forming uh, a ceramic piece, and this is called slip casting. Slip casting is done uh, for pieces like cup handles, um, teapots, creamers, things that uh, can't be formed on a wheel. These small pieces are formed and then attached by hand to the pottery. Because of the properties of clay, it's a very, very wonderful material to work with. It's a great a pleasure, just the feel of the clay and the manipulation of it and rolling it and making ropes out of it, whatever you can do with the clay. You can't do with any other material. After a piece dries, imperfections are removed carefully by hand. Every piece has a very precise profile and, uh, and very often the edge of the piece is going to come in contact with somebody's lips, like on a cup, so we want it to be perfect. The uh, primary metals is where the colors come from. There's iron, it's cobalt, chrome, those are blended just as if, if you wanted to, if you were a painter. Too much glaze will make the piece too saturated with color. Too little glaze will make the clay body read through and will make the, uh, the piece rough. So it's a very, very precise operation and each glazer that we have here has been working at it for you know, in excess of 20 years. 
So this is the final result of the piece we've been working on all day today. This uh, piece has had about 15 different uh, craftspersons' hands on it, and it is now ready to be shipped all over the world. People are so grateful when they find out, you know, they've had it all their lives and that it's relatively indestructible. And that in itself becomes a great satisfaction. It's just part of your life. It's, it's a member of your family.